Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so today, um, so let me give a very brief introduction about myself and my company. Um, so personally, um, I am a, a, solution, a solutions architect uh, for Cavium, and then uh, my professional training is CPU architecture. Uh, since 2000, I've been working with a lot of uh, customers who are mostly equipment makers for telecom networking. And so I've seen uh, the system architectures and the trends and how people are building and making high performance, uh, both PNF and VNFs, and also from a, a data center perspective. Uh, from a, Cavim is a, is a company that supplies uh, highly integrated semiconductor products. Um, so one unique thing about Cavium is that um, we are very focused on the application domain. So for example, uh, we supply processors and single chip base stations, and to the extent that we also have our baseband stack, um, so we basically have a, a full base station, which um, in fact we contributed recently uh, to the inf telecom infra project, uh, Open Cellular, we contributed LTE base station. And also with the uh, LTE stack, we have made it a VNF. Um, so as Stefan mentioned, uh, we're active in the m uh, which is a community project. So we're using that VNF uh, with the BBU, uh, the baseband, uh, partnered with other vendors, EPC, uh, and other VNFs. Uh, we build a, a virtual uh, mobile infrastructure, and I will talk a lot more about that in today's presentation. Um, and, and from Kevin's perspective, we focus on not just the service provider market, but also uh, mega data center, uh, enterprise, um, so basically we're very infrastructure focused. We have a lot of compute, uh, essentially multi-core processors, and as I mentioned, base station on a chip is one of them, so we definitely have a lot, have a lot of expertise in baseband. Uh, and also multi-core processors, um, which we integrate a lot of accelerators, so uh, some of the presentations today touch a point you know, between PNF and VNF. Um, so basically in our SOCs, uh, we have the standard processor, Right, that is uh, part of the chip. And then we also have other integrated accelerators. And then from a 5G perspective, because of the latency and throughput jump, we expect that to be an uh, important part of a uh, uh, processor as well. And then we have uh, um, also from a networking side, um, programmable SDN switch. And we also have used it uh, in this M card, uh, as well as smart NICs for offloading, v-switching, et cetera, and also on the storage and security side. Um, the other interesting aspect is we work a lot on building an ecosystem. So uh, both from a software, you know, uh, virtualization platform, um, uh, kernels, um, and also from a hardware side. You know, so we have a lot of white box partners and also customers uh, as OEMs. So we are using these white boxes in the community project. So, you know, what I'm gonna present later in slides on how the M Corp works, uh, a lot of them are based on, um, you know, basically the hardware is all white box. Okay, um, so we also very focus on wireless. Um, so this is a, um, a kind of a big picture showing a pre 5G to 5G uh, from an overall mobile infrastructure perspective. You know, so NFV and SDN, we talk about it, uh, especially NFV, a lot today, and that's basically the baseline, right? So you have to have it. Uh, and this picture also highlights a few other interesting things. Um, one of them is that you see, um, you know, kind of three major columns. You know, so the, the leftmost uh, column is supposed to uh, look at the um, cell site, you know, basically subscribers and where the cell towers are gonna be. And the middle column is showing the edge data centers. You know, I've seen in a lot of the presentations today talking about uh, edge computing, edge data center. So that is actually new type of data centers uh, at the edge. Um, basically, inside it would be like a data center in terms of the SDN and uh, servers and and, activity, uh, and equipment like that. Uh, the most important thing is, is that it is very close to the subscribers. So that is actually a big edge uh, from a service provider perspective because they have the real estate and um, you know being close to the subscriber versus other kind of providers uh, from a cloud scale perspective uh, or web scale. Um, the um, and then from a 5G perspective, it is also very important uh, because a lot of the latency promise, uh, you really need to be close and there's going to be also a lot of services at the edge. So um, in the MCOT project, um, you know, as CORT stands for Central Office, we architect as data center, uh, there's a lot of focus on edge data center. Um, and, and then um, to, to make it uh, from a 5G perspective, the edge data center, it is uh, uh, also a major piece um, 
in terms of fulfilling both the RAN as well as the core in terms of getting that um, latency uh, to, be, to be short. Um, so from the, from the core perspective, um, you know, we have implemented concept of distributed EPC. Um, so you will see that if uh, a service can be supported by local service, you know, that there's distributed EPC which can be done in the edge data center to terminate the wireless traffic, and then we can get into um, the edge services. Um, and that edge data center can also be multi-access, so it would also terminate other kind of access technology traffic and do services there. The other uh, interesting area is on the RAN side, right? So on the left column, uh, these actually shows a transition of the current kind of RAN to what a 5G kind of RAN would look like. Um, so from starting from the top, you see holistic uh, ENOBs. So ENOB is uh, LTE terminology for base stations. Um, so, you know, starting around uh, 2009, there's this uh, headnet concept, so it shows both macro and micro uh, ENOBs. But then from uh, 5G and going forward, uh, centralization is, is a big piece. So, and centralization is not really just one option. For example, in 3GPP, um, there are around seven options that people are looking at how to divide up the work between uh, what is done in the cell site versus what is done in a centralized location. And in this picture, you see mostly is in the edge data center uh, for in terms of centralized. Uh, so how you separate these are actually dependent on the front hall characteristics. And uh, I'm showing basically a, a bunch of auction, options here, and there's actually more from 3GPP perspective. I mean, they have, they're talking about seven. Um, so we've implemented some of these options um, in MCOT, for example, uh, and I will show that. Um, and also, uh, we've done a lot of um, collaboration with uh, service providers individually to analyze the front hall. Um, so the interesting thing from, from this picture is also that, you know, a lot of the thing we talk about are being standardized, uh, but with MCORD and with this white box and uh, equipment um, and the community, we are actually trying out these concepts, you know, so this front hall split uh, or some people call it intelligent front hall is one of the area. We are already testing out with, with a reference design uh, or reference implementation. Um, you know, and then uh, even network slicing, we've done uh, that in the MCORD project. So um, next page is uh, getting more into the uh, MCOT, right? So MCOT is a community project, you know, is uh, driven by ONF, uh, initially ON Lab, you know, which recently uh, have merged with ONF, is all on the ON, yeah. So there are a few areas that are highlighted, uh, which are key in terms of how we see uh, edge computing. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about this page. So I'm gonna have to keep flipping back. Um, so one is open source, it's open source community, right? So you see that the whole platform software, um, you know, um, hypervisor, containers, OpenStack, SDN controller, uh, orchestrator, uh, are all based on open source uh, materials. And then from application VNF perspective, there are also VNF options coming up. And then this aggregation is a key uh, aspect. Um, so there are these aggregation um, instances in both the RAN side and the core. Right, so from a RAN perspective, I talk about the split between the, um, between the uh, cell site and the um, edge data center in terms of this um, splitting the, the processing of the, um, of the uh, baseband. Um, another aspect of this circuit, as I mentioned by previous uh, speakers, is a control versus data, right? That's essentially uh, SDN. So separating out the control uh, helps to make the um, um, SDN, you know, um, apply to the control perspective. I'm just gonna leave this on and I'll talk about the other ones. Um, and then, uh, you know, also from a, a, you know, in a, a core side, because uh, the distributed uh, EPC uh, is, um, is also another uh, aspect of disaggregation, right? Because uh, you, you wanna be able to scale, for example, the control versus data plane. Um, and uh, in, in just typical use case people talk about is, okay, you know, um, you have a lot more uh, IoT devices and you wanna scale the control or connectivity, but you don't need to scale the throughput. Um, so with VNF and NFV, um, you know, disaggregation is much more efficient to scale that. Um, and then I also talk about cloud, cloudification and virtualization, right? So, so all of these are basically, uh, you know, basic building blocks uh, for, for the underlying platform, right? Because it is all running a virtualized um, uh, platform and SDN managed. 
uh, and it's supposed to be in the uh, edge data center so that uh, it is very scalable in terms of you know, getting more elastic uh, resource allocation and the allocation. Uh, also being able to do multi-access, terminating different access uh, technologies. I mean, from a, from a court perspective, mobile is one. You know, they also have other projects on uh, residential, which is um, virtualizing the residential gateways, um, uh, like for example, G-Point kind of uh, equipment, uh, as well as uh, uh, Metro Ethernet. Um, so having Edge Data Center, is, uh, it, it is a good place to terminate all these traffic through this multi-access Edge uh, uh, computing. So this picture here shows our demo just last week. Uh, we did a demo, um, in fact, there were five demos, so this was one of them. Um, so this demo basically shows the complete end-to-end -end, uh, mobile infrastructure, right? Starting from the top left, uh, you see a few tablets or, or uh, cell phones. So those are the users, they are connected through LTE to the radio head. Um, the remote radio unit um, uh, here, it, it is uh, at the cell site, and that, is connected uh, to the edge data center. So most of the picture um, to, from the middle to the right side represents uh, multiple racks of uh, servers uh, running these VNFs in an uh, edge data center. Um, so I talked about front hall. Um, so the front hall here is actually the fabric connecting the radio unit, the remote radio unit at the cell site to this edge data center. Um, so there are about seven options that 3GPP is talking about uh, or thinking about. Um, so in our demo, we've implemented option two. Um, you know, we also have a lot of uh, focus in terms of implementing option six, option seven. So there are different levels of um, splitting and, and the way you decide to use which one is typically based on your front hall characteristic. Um, so option two is an interesting one because uh, it actually has the best tolerance on latency, right? So even if you have a non-ideal front hall, you know, typically people talk about CIPRI and optical, but sometimes you have non-ideal. We work with one service provider uh, who has a G.fast front hall, you know, with uh, multiple milliseconds of latencies. So with option two, it turns out that quality can still be very good. And then from a remote area perspective, that would be a good option. Um, and then we also uh, look at other options like six and seven where we are getting closer to the phi uh, layer and so you can do a lot more calm at a centralized location um, for, for more gain from a cellular quality perspective. And then in the data center here, uh, we see multiple racks, so rack A, rack a and rack B. Um, so these are based on um, you know, standard servers. Uh, we supply ARM processors, so these are running on ARM processors. And then uh, SDN switch uh, fabric, both spy and leaf fabric. Uh, again, these are all white boxes, um, and they are all running the uh, ONLab or ONF's uh, SDN controller, ONOS. Uh, we also support ODL. Um, and then um, ONLab has uh, orchestrator called XOS, which is you know, doing the VNF management uh, in, in this uh, open source setup. Um, you know, the longer term plan from an M Corp perspective is integrated with ONAP as well. So that is a, a basically a, a, um, a quick um, you know, overview of some of the activities that uh, are going on you know, in parallel to the 3GPP spec, right? And uh, community effort using white box hardware. Um, so in this picture, all of the silicon inside these boxes are, are, are cadmium based silicon.